Good morning, Banana Mators. We're gonna talk a little bit more about cycles today. And here's just a collection of random cycles that I have kicking around, because doesn't everyone just have a pocket full of cycles for when they need them? <laughs> so in a previous video, we did some stuff with bubbles and you might recognize this if you went along with the old bubble cycle thing. Let me put this on half speed. I like to work at half speed because I like to work on ones and we usually post on twos when we're doing things for the show. So I will often work at 12 frames per second on ones and then convert to twos. In a previous video, I show how to get this from using simple bubbles to create some sort of a complex cycle, starting with a simple process. So once you get to this stage, this first one here, then you can start adding additional details to your cycle to make something that looks very complex, but actually it was very simple to get going in the first place. So this one, for example, it started as a very simple flag wave. This is a flag. Just, just watch the yellow bit. I didn't even color it in. There's some pieces that are just missing. <laughs> didn't even notice. But it's a flag wave. Anywhere you stop this, let's grab some blue here. Letter B on my keyboard stopped working. B is for brush and it's very annoying. <laughs> anyway, here we have a flag. And that's all I animated when I first started. I just animated this very simple flag. You can see it doing its flag thing. And then I started adding hooks and holes to the top of it. Then I added another layer, just duplicated it, changed the color and slapped it on top. And it looks much harder to do than it actually was. Go back in the other video, you can get to this point and then you can just add and subtract as many little details and bobs and bits and stuff as you want. My keyboard today, it's a problem. <laughs> Okay, so here I have my cycle. I just want to see the previous one and I am going to make it a little bit more fiery. This thing is just like weird blobby kidney shapes. To have something that looks fiery, any effect that you're going to try and do, you want to go and look at reference and see kind of what the general rules are. The more rules you have, the more consistent you keep your like physics, even if it's cartoon physics, the more believable and consistent your effects are going to be. So if you have something where there's liquid dripping upwards like this, as long as you keep the liquid going in that direction, it's going to be fine. They'll be like, sure, some sort of weird goopy liquid that drips up into the sky. I'll go along with it because it's cartoon. We can do whatever we want. So with fires, generally you have a triangle shape. If you keep your stuff somewhat triangular, it's going to look like fire. I mean, this one's starting to move away from fire because it's not getting very triangular. I did this because Star and the Forces of Evil has this really cute circle fire. So go check out what they do, but they keep it much more triangular and it looks like fire. Once we come over here to these like M shapes, it no longer looks like fire. Even if you comp it like fire, you put your compositing nodes on here, you glow it up. It's, it looks kind of like glowy stuff, but it doesn't look like fire. This one's moving away from fire. This one feels the most fiery. That one's blue. So we're going to triangle this one out a little bit and it's a guide. We're going to turn you into a guide mystery thing. So what I want to do is give myself a space that this thing will live in like this and I'll make it about that big. So this is where I want my fire to live inside this triangle. And I'm going to bulk up the bottom to fill in this space. The B doesn't work. <laughs> and here, I know it's going to go from here and then start scooping in. So I'm going to just have each frame, frame by frame it closer and closer to where we had it farther along in the cycle. This we're going to make a little larger. This here we're going to have like that and just go along frame by frame. Here we have it coming in again. So we're going to start to add some inward movement to our next round. And you can finish this out first. Go along like this and just kind of, I don't want it to pop at any point. So I'm just going to kind of even it out. All right, nothing's too boily. Then we'll add the next layer on our addition. And this is it. This is how I make any cycle. I start with some kind of bubble structure as we did in the previous video to get the general movement and base shape working. 
and then I add additions to it. I add the detail and decoration. And maybe at times I will freehand the whole thing so I won't start with a structure. But for production, especially I work on shows that have very fast turnarounds. I have about a week for an 11 minute episode. I don't have time to kind of freehand it and hope it turns out with the timing and stuff I want. So I'll work with some sort of structure like this and then I'll add to it. And that will give me the best results in sort of a quick turnaround. So let's see, we want this to go all the way over to that side. So when I work with structures like this, you will get things that are less organic, but the main concern I have in the type of work I do is speed. I have episode each week to get done and I'm the only effects animator. So if I have 45 scenes, I have less than an hour per scene to get everything in that I need. So by starting with something very functional, like a guide, it allows me to get things working consistently faster. And then I can decide based on the amount of time I have remaining, how much detail I can add to that pass. So if I know that I have to put this in 10 scenes, or I only have 10 scenes that week, and this is the only thing I have to do, then I have a little bit more luxury to make sure that my cycle is a little bit more interesting and exciting by adding additional layers of detail. But if I have a real fast turnaround, I have to get it out and put it in 60, 70 scenes, that's happened before, then I want to get it done as fast as possible so I can start putting it into the scenes and just that process itself takes time. So I won't have as much time to figure it out. So there we go. I do have a pop here that I do not like, so I will go back and fix that. So with fire, you have a lot of opportunity to work with boil. In real life, fire is quite exciting and it pops and things fly off and you have lots of sparks going everywhere and vortexing around. It's really fun to do that when you have a little bit more time or it's a show that lends itself to something a little bit less consistent. But this is going to get you things much faster and more consistent when you have to get it done. Okay, let's pretend this fire is working really well. I've gone in and done everything I want. I mean, it's cycling fine. Then we've been adding stuff. We can take stuff away. So we learned about our negative animation. We can put a hole in it. Boop, animate our hole moving up until it disappears. There we go, now we've got holes added. So when you see something like this, maybe even way more detailed, the B doesn't work. This is going to ruin me today. <laughs> okay, so often you see fire that looks very, very detailed and has a lot of sharp edges. That's usually done something like this, where you start with something a little bit more complicated and then you take lots of chunks out of it and you'll get much sharper points by erasing out the things around than you will by drawing sharp points. You'd have to be very meticulous about drawing this, but once you erase things out, you can get very beautiful sharp points very long, sharp bits, and have a little bit more of an intimidating fire, something that looks... Drawing sharp bits like that and trying to cycle it up would take absolutely forever, like this, trying to figure this out, and then animating it up. So more often you would see something like this where you start with a very simple flag, and then you just animate one hole at a time, just cutting it apart until it, it's been chewed up quite a bit. Okay, I'm gonna have to throw my keyboard out the window. <laughs> D is also not working. Why is this happening? <laughs> Brush. My keyboard is not a friend. All right, so let's add some more details. Boop, 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 boop. So we can add little sparks as we go. And with sparks, I'll go this fast. This is real time. Just boop, 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 boop. And as long as you put one on each frame, it'll work out. You can have your sparks doing all sorts of little flippity dancey stuff. Um, I like to think when I'm doing a fire, I'll just kind of imagine like it's vortexing like this. So keep your sparks somewhere in this line. But remember that if you, the, the more triangular, the B doesn't work. If you keep your stuff moving like this up your triangle, it's going to feel more fiery. That's just kind of my basic fire rules keep it in a triangle shape but i'm going to go now and smash my keyboard with a hammer 
but hopefully you can see how some of the things we've seen already, you do your, your simple cycles using your bubbles, you fill it in whatever way you can, and then you can add and subtract as much detail as you want to get all sorts of different shapes. Like this one, I just took the same one and I was just adding a bunch of different stuff. I was doing a demo for a class, added tons of holes, added lots of hooks. The hooks are floating up into the sky, but this thing and this thing, same beginning. They both started with that simple animation. Add detail, subtract things, add subtract as many times as you want, layer on more, add a few spark layers, double it, flip it, put it on a quad map, mesh warp, whatever you need to keep adding as much detail as works with the style of your show. And you're going to have some super cool cycles and no one's going to know how you did it. They're going to think you're, man, you had you cycle up all these little hooks and stuff. And you're going to be like, I can keep track of 7,000 different arcs at a time. <laughs> when in reality, we just do it one arc at a time. That's it. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, keyboard. <laughs>